Hi, so there was some exciting news this week, um, especially for someone like me in the UK as a second-hand Hyundai Ioniq electric owner. And this was Hyundai releasing uh, lots of details about the second generation Hyundai Ioniq electric. So my car is now officially a first generation Ioniq. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is delve into the details and ask the question, you know, should you buy it? Does this seem like a good electric car? Um, I'm not going to compare it to the uh, Tesla Model 3, which also this week the UK pricing came out. I'll deal with that in a separate video. And if you don't want to watch the whole thing and go into the details, uh, which are all the different ways it looks and features and so on. Um, yes, I think it looks like a really great car. Um, I think the current Ionic battery size that I have is going to cease to be come available. So it'll be the kind of default Ionic electric. And I think, you know, if you have a certain use case, it's going to be a really, really good option. Um, but I think there are some possible um, sort of buyer beware issues around it. If you're expecting it to be something more than a car you use just within its, you know, range envelope most of the time. So let's get into that and let's discuss it in this video. So what I'm going to do is look through the documents, uh, the images and the videos that Hyundai have released this week for editorial uses, the sort of electronic press kit for the new second generation Hyundai Ionic Electric. They also talk about the um, plug-in Ionic, plug-in hybrid Ionic and the normal hybrid Ionic. I'm not going to cover those in this video. Um, so I'm going to be sort of looking back and forth my computer screen here and go through these um, details. The first thing that is, you know, you should know is that the availability for it is slightly later than the plug-in hybrid and the hybrid. So it's sort of earmarked for September this year, September 2019, uh, this 2020 model second generation Ionic Electric. Um, so bear that in mind, the, the availability of it We'll see. Um, but it's just useful to know the various details, the differences from the current Ionic, um, what sort of things would be exciting going in as a fresh owner who's never driven an Ionic before. And then, as I say, just one or two things which to do with the battery choice they've gone with it for um, for the Ionic. And watching a video by the EV Puzzle about the 39 kilowatt hour Kona, which I think the new second generation 2020 model Ionic shares that battery. There could be some issues that are yet going to kind of, you know, tick off a few future Ionic owners if they have certain usage patterns. So let's dive right into it. First then let's get to the looks of the second generation Ionic as this is the thing I kind of care the least about but it's the most obvious kind of change really if you were looking at the two cars my current first generation Ionic electric and the second generation Ionic electric because you can't physically see from the outside that any battery changes have happened and there are sort of two main areas of change or three main areas of change the grill the um, lighting and the wheel covers the overall shell seems to retain the kind of very uh, efficient you know sort of world-class aerodynamics as i've covered in another video of the first generation ionic so we could be expecting here if, if the kind of drivetrain has also retained the same efficiency as the first generation ionic for this to be a very efficient car indeed they've gone for this new family look which i guess is to harmonize the ionic with the other um models in the Hyundai range. I don't like it. It's also similar to the Kona Electric, but it doesn't have the same functionality. The Kona Electric has got this kind of, you know, blanked out front grille, but behind it is the charging port. The charging port has been left where it is on the Ionic Electric. It hasn't changed from the first gen to the second gen Ionic. Um, so it's this new kind of crinkly look, and um, I commented on Twitter when I first saw it on the Electric website, this um, new front grille, you know, and someone said, oh, at least they've lost the kind of Hannibal Lecter look. Well, I think what they've gone from is from, I'll try and do this without seeing it, the kind of Hannibal Lecter look like this of the grey or black blanked off um, front grille of the first generation Ionic that I've got to more of a kind of, you know, Bane from Batman kind of grille. I don't really care about this. Most of the time you're inside the car, not looking at the car, so it doesn't bother me that much. It's an odd choice. I don't like the aesthetics. Um, I just hope it doesn't hurt the aerodynamics. But it's still a very aerodynamic shape and efficiency is king. So I think it will it will continue to be the kind of efficiency king on the worldwide EV market. So the second change then, really trivial again, is just the wheel covers or the wheel alloys seem to be different. Again, it's fine as long as it has aerodynamic function. I don't really mind how it looks. I like the fact that they've stuck with uh, 16 inch uh, wheels so that again that's better for efficiencies so yeah the third thing then that's changed externally on the second generation ionic compared to the first generation ionic is the just the lighting the led lighting front and back has changed um so the at the front the daylight running lights have changed um they are this kind of well they sort of doubled up the lower daylight running lights and they seem to have sort of segments in the upper lighting units also on as, as daylight running lights and it's fine and if it increases safety that's great on the back of the car then they've changed the kind of one sort of um, curve look um, that my car has into sort of two l-shaped um, lights and again that's fine if that helps with safety if that makes it clear that you're braking and, and the lights are on and so on that's fine and it's a nice little you know it's a way to distinguish 
um, as well as the front grille, you'll be able to tell from the back or from the front of first gen from a second gen. It's very subtle, but you'll be able to tell. They've kept the same position and the same type of charging port. So it's, you know, a kind of dual use that you can use your home type two uh, plug AC charging up to kind of 6.6 .6 kilowatt or 7.2 kind of nominal stated in the car. And for rapid charging, you've got CCS either kind of, you know, up to 50 kilowatt or the kind of, you know, hypercharger rates above that 100 kilowatt, 175 kilowatt. Although the car appears to be kind of capped in its charging rate. They haven't specified the charging rate. They've just said charging times. I'll come back to that. The engine bay looks almost identical. They've still got the thing of the kind of um, the charger block, the inverter and the motor stacked so that it looks like a traditional engine bay, even though it's a kind of electric motor bay. Let's move to the interior. So the interior has changed in a number of ways. It seems firstly, they've kind of um, lifted the sat nav GPS out of the dash, presumably to lower the dash, although I'd have to sit in one to tell. And they seem to have kind of raised the cowl a little bit and sort of sculpted it a bit differently from the first generation in this new um, second generation one. They've given this kind of day and night comparison here. I'm flicking between the images um, and they've put this kind of mood lighting in, which I think is kind of popular in some cars now people like it it looks fine it gives it a kind of you know interesting look and then they've they've changed the instrument cluster behind the steering wheel the kind of the graphics there and the display i think is different so there's a few things to notice there's some sort of uh, fancy graphics around the different drive modes and they've changed the kind of indicator so it's a digital speed readout and some sort of power indicator by the look of it or maybe it's a combination uh, it's difficult to tell from the video and the pictures the battery indicator on the right which in mine i can't remember how many bars there are but it's certainly not as many as this there's bars upon bars upon bars if that gives you a more linear you know graduated uh, view of your usage of the battery how you're running it down fine it still doesn't give a battery percentage by default on the instrument cluster like my first generation ionic you've got to kind of press a button on the central uh, instrument cluster for that um, but again, it's fine. All looks good. Um, I like the change of graphics. It doesn't look exactly like the new Kona electric stash. Um, it doesn't look like my current first gen Ionic, and it doesn't look like the Kia e-Niro. It's something a bit different again. The buttons, a lot of people, I guess, Tesla owners um, commented on Twitter when these images went up on a kind of very Tesla-esque blog, Electric, um, that they were buttons, buttons, buttons. I don't mind that particularly in my Ionic. It's very functional. I've noticed the buttons are different though. Mine are kind of physical you know, you can physically see the actual demarcation of the buttons in my first gen Ionic and in the Kona electric as well. Um, this second gen Ionic has got some sort of, you know, uh, it looks almost buttonless, but you sort of press an area where the text is. It doesn't seem to be a kind of protruding um, embossed kind of buttons. It seems to just be an area that you press, some new design, that's fine. Also good news, which, you know, sort of controlling the car remotely and so on is that there appears to be an app. They seem to be making a big thing of it. So hopefully, and there's a European, um, press kit that these images and video come from hopefully then it is standard globally and we're going to get a nice kind of app control a bit like the leaf and other cars where you can do things with the car remotely from it um, but i know it's two things firstly you can see the charging and maybe even stop and start charging remotely from one of the images shown and then the other one interestingly shows that um, you can activate the air conditioning you know so you can maybe cool or preheat the car remotely which you can't do at the moment on my first generation ionic except on scheduling in the uk at least because there's no app here in the uk but in this image i noticed that the car is plugged in into a charge um, when it's doing this so again maybe like my first generation ionic which needs to be plugged in when you do a scheduled you know preheating or pre-cooling um, maybe the second generation ionic needs to be plugged in to be controlled you know the kind of ac or, or the the heating with the app from looking at the um the press kit footage, the, the electric model that's being shown, it does seem to be top of the range because if you look very closely at the buttons on the kind of, you know, the, the center console by the seat, it's clearly showing that it has ventilated seats, which I think is a kind of top of the line model um, feature. So I think the model that we're looking at here is top of the range. It doesn't appear to have any kind of copper accents like my UK first generation Ionic has, which has got copper all over the place. But I think the trim that we're seeing here is probably the top Looking at the interior, there are definitely the regen control paddles to do the sort of level three, two, one, and zero, which is coasting kind of regen. Hyundai also points out that you can hold the uh, increase regen button to bring the car to a complete halt, a sort of one pedal driving like you can in the Kona Electric. And also they've got this smart regenerative braking when you're in the uh, smart cruise control, which adjusts the ideal level of regen based on your distance from the vehicle in front. Again, like they introduced in the Kona Electric. The steering wheel looks almost identical. Same kind of button layout and button features. Then, yeah, looking at this kind of center cluster of buttons, there's this new button there with a camera icon and says view underneath it. 
Uh, there's the other thing there's for heating steering wheel, heated seats three levels, uh, ventilated seats three levels, drive mode selection, electronic parking brake, the same kind of four button um, gear selector, drive, park, reverse and neutral, and the same little kind of like uh, hand thing for doing the gears, little hand rest. Um, so the camera view, maybe you can switch on the reversing camera, you know, by choice. Maybe there are other cameras, forward facing, rear facing. I, I don't see any evidence of that, but possibly. Everything else seems the same as the first gen Ionic. Mm -hmm. Um, the stereo system in the model shown looks like the kind of premium top-level Infinity sound system, like my first-gen Ionics are probably the same. Yeah, powered windows look the same. Again, there's no copper piping on the seats in this, this top trim, seemingly, model shown. So this whole copper accenting thing seems to be gone, both inside and outside. Um, you'll be able to tell a first-gen Ionic from a second-gen Ionic with that as well, the, the absence of the electric piping, unless that is coming for the UK model, who knows. You can still turn off the virtual engine simulated sound, the sound at low speed. That's switchable off, and you've got the kind of blind spot warning, the lane keeping assist, um, traction control, and other things. Very similar to the first gen Ionic. Yeah, and it's got two um, memory seats for the driver's seat again. So again, just like the first gen Ionic. So you can see the kind of app connectivity, I think, even in the instrument cluster in the internal videos, in that you can see weather and various other things shown. Um, also, there's uh, the ability, like the Kona Electric, it seems, to limit the charging, uh, the maximum charge of both AC and DC charging to protect the battery against degradation. You can't do that in the first gen Ionic. Okay, so moving to the all important upgrade numbers from the first gen Ionic Electric to the second gen Ionic Electric of, you know, battery and range increases. So the battery, they say, has gone up to a 38.3 kilowatt hour battery. So the range is now 293 or 294 kilometers. It varies where you are in the press release on that, 182 miles. So that's up from 130 miles or 124 miles EPA, which is about 200, 200 plus a bit kilometers in my first gen Ionic Electric. And the battery then has gone up from 28 kilowatt hours to 38.3 kilowatt hours. 36.8% increase, it's almost a 37% increase. If you actually look into the um, first gen Ionic electric manual, they say the range is sort of minus 50 plus 50 miles, so about 80 miles to 180 miles. So if you're thinking about 36% on top of those, you're looking at a usable range from about 109 miles up from 80 to about 245 miles up from 180 miles. That's the kind of maximum, you know, sort of uh, error bars really on your sort of usable range in an Ionic Electric. So that's quite a leap up from my first gen. And I think that's quite a valuable increase in range. So the highest I've ever seen in my first gen Ionic Electric, which was in summer, um, around about kind of mid 20s uh, um, centigrade, was about 170 miles and that would be 273, 274 kilometers. So for the second gen Ionic Electric going 36% over the kind of highest number I've seen in my first gen Ionic Electric, you'd have 231 miles or about 372 kilometers. So that's kind of the, would be you know, the equivalent maximum compared on the equivalent maximum I've seen in my first gen Ionic Electric. So you're looking at, at sort of you know 182 miles plus or minus 68, I would say. So that's that's fairly good. Um, that's going to make it a, a very usable car, I think. And judging by my first gen Ionic Electric, which is very efficient, very aerodynamic, um, if this is true also in how they've set up the second gen Ionic Electric, that's going to cover more than amply most people's daily needs, weekly needs, yearly needs. It's only going to be occasional journeys where you're going to need rapid charging in the UK and Europe, I would say. USA is a different matter, but you know, um, I'm not sure how many of these they plan to sell there anyway and how they're going to be used. Yeah, the, the app connectivity will give, um, you know, live info on weather and traffic and so on. So that seems to be new. Um, it's come now to the first gen Ionic Electric, I think, with an update if you do a Wi-Fi hotspot. So it might require a Wi-Fi hotspot in the second gen Ionic Electric as well. Uh, there's still the lane keeping assist system, um, which kind of keeps you in the lane more or less, a little bit of a safety assist, not a kind of autopilot or self-driving in any way, as I've shown in previous videos. Um, it says optional lane following assist, although that's probably on the top model, the one that's shown in all the footage here. And that's a kind of additional one to keep you in the lane. I don't know how good it is because it's on the Kona Electric, not on my first gen Ionic Electric. That's a definite upgrade. There's high beam assist. So I guess that's automatic um, high beam. There's still the smart cruise control, like my first gen Ionic Electric, um, although it's got this stop and go feature. So perhaps it will enable you to sort of stop for longer. You can stop for about three seconds in my first gen Ionic Electric, and then you've got to sort of press a button to resume. And my car won't technically um, detect pedestrians or cyclists, I don't think. The second gen Ionic Electric will do both, detecting when you're getting too close to a cyclist or a motorcycle um, you know, rider. The cruise control also um, systems, the cameras will pick up speed limit signs to adjust for that. I don't know if it then, you know, 
I don't think it makes any adjustment or correction to the speed, the, the cruise control speed. Perhaps it does. So not just based on the sat nav GPS data, but on, on visual recognition of things. Maybe um, in the UK, these kind of uh, managed highways where you get the different the motorways, you get the different speeds coming up. Um, they keep the kind of um, blind spot detection and the rear cross traffic alert as well. There's a new driving mode being added, Eco Plus, which is also in the Kona Electric, and I think in the Kia e-Niro, but not in my first gen Ionic Electric, so that's another addition. The electric motor has been increased from 88 kilowatts in my um, Ionic Electric first gen. The second gen has got 113 kilowatts. Hopefully it can regen 113 kilowatts as well. And hopefully this added power is controlled a bit by better traction control because the wheels already, you know, spin or peel the tires in my first gen Ionic Electric with the 88, let alone the kind of 113. Now, a very interesting thing and a great achievement if they've actually, it is correct. The uh, weight of the Ionic Electric first gen and second gen are identical, 1,420 kilograms. Yeah, so they don't seem to have increased the weight at all, even though they've actually got 36% extra energy storage in this bigger 38.3 kilowatt hour battery compared to the 28 kilowatt hour uh, usable battery I've got in my first gen Ionic Electric, which I think is a kind of nominally a 30.5 kilowatt hour actual, so it has a buffer. I'm not sure if this kind of 38.3 kilowatt hour battery actually has a buffer on top. So, so far, all of these things for the second gen Ionic Electric seem like really good boosts over the first gen Ionic Electric. It will all depend on, you know, are they selling it for roughly the same price as the current Ionic Electric? In which case, that's really good news. It's going to be a really good buy if they can keep it at the current kind of pricing. Again, it will depend on whether you can actually get one. That's a big caveat with any of the Hyundai Electric models. Their availability worldwide has been very poor so far. They're great cars, but the availability for them is terrible. Long waiting lists and the supply doesn't match the demand. So overall, I'd say, yes, you know, buy it um, if your use case is met by this kind of range. But there is this one kind of uh, caveat here, which is about the battery that's in the second gen Ionic Electric. And I think that's definitely a buyer beware situation if you're expecting with that extra kind of range, that extra capacity to be able to go on much longer journeys and use the kind of new higher power CCS rapid chargers that are coming out in the UK and across Europe. There might be some issues here around the way that this battery charges. So there are two issues. First is the voltage of the battery pack that they've decided to put in the second gen Ionic Electric, which I think is the one that's come from the lower range Kona Electric. And there's the charging profile, which I first saw on the YouTube channel by Nigel at the EV Puzzle, where he's kind of charged both his 64 kilowatt hour Kona Electric and the lower battery spec 39 kilowatt hour um, battery pack in the other Kona Electric. Now he found that the 39 kilowatt hour Kona Electric battery charged kind of overall slower. It was a kind of, you know, the profile goes kind of like this and it goes from about sort of 35 kilowatt charge on a 50 kilowatt post up to close to 40 and then tapers off very quickly. His 64 kilowatt hour battery held a higher charge rate on a 50 kilowatt charger for longer. So there might be some slow charging issues around this uh, battery pack in terms of the sort of software profile. And there's the inherent fact that the 38.3 kilowatt hour battery pack that they've shown in this second gen Ionic Electric you know, press release materials, it has a pack voltage of 319.4 volts. And the same figures for my first gen Ionic Electric state 360 volts. So why does that matter? Well, the rapid charges are typically limited on current. If, if your voltage is lower, the car will charge slower. So you'll get kind of like 35 kilowatts where you might be getting 45 kilowatts in my car. And then on the higher power kind of hypercharger range of rapid chargers that can do 100 kilowatts or 175 kilowatts, that's the kind of power they can deliver. My first gen Ionic Electric will charge at 70 kilowatt peak, 65 kilowatt average. The second gen Ionic Electric is gonna charge lower. So Hyundai states in its press release materials for the second gen Ionic Electric that a um, zero to 80% quick charge, so rapid charge at a 50 kilowatt charge point will take approximately 57 minutes. But if you have it at a 100 kilowatt charger, they state 54 minutes from the same range, zero to 80%. So that's only three minutes quicker, even though in my Ionic Electric, a 100 kilowatt charger would give you, you know, sort of 70 kilowatt peak, 65 kilowatt average. So it would be much quicker to charge on a 100 kilowatt charger than a 50 kilowatt. And this kind of slower charging profile seems to be what Nigel at the EV Puzzle found when he tested a kind of 39 kilowatt hour Kona Electric 
But just bear that in mind. If you want to use it for um, you know normal sort of day-to-day -day driving, commuting, and so on, I'm sure it's going to cover many people's needs more so than my first gen Ionic Electric with its more limited range. They've added feature upon feature upon feature. So overall, yes, I think good buy if you can get one of them. If you if the price matches your kind of your budget, but just watch out for that charging thing if you're if you're intending to do it, use it as a kind of you know road trip, grand tour kind of vehicle. Just be aware that there are some issues. Okay, so thanks for watching overall. Like I say, second gen Ionic Electric looks like a great car with just some little caveats, uh, better than my first gen Ionic Electric. Whether we'll ever end up driving one, owning one, I don't know. The future is very uncertain for us right now, but you know, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me and bye for now.